Hey everybody, Captain Kimo back again for another video tutorial. I'm on my website right now at CaptainKimo.com and this video will be covering the uh, full moon shot that I did last week. So let me scroll down here to the uh, full moon post that I did. So this is the full moon shot. I'm going to show you real fast the uh, image that I will be uh, post processing for you. So this is going to be the image that we'll be working with and I'm not going to be uh, trying to post process this image exactly what I'll be doing is I'll just uh, post process the photo and kind of show you tips and tricks on how I got the uh, final image so let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you the uh, exposures that we'll be using and for this photo we'll be using five exposures now I like to use five exposures for HDR when I'm shooting night scenes like this because it helps to uh, reduce the noise so this is the first exposure this is the evenly exposed image and we can get going here this is the underexposed image and this is the overexposed image so the, those are our three images and then we have the other two images which will make five and this is the uh, underexposed image by four stops and this is the overexposure by four stops so this will help reduce the noise uh, when I merge them together in photomatics so let's go ahead and go into photomatics and I'll drag and drop the exposures into photomatics to create our HDR image okay so here we are we have photomatics open I'm just gonna select all five exposures here I'm gonna drag and drop it into my uh, photomatics window and we will start post processing or tone mapping the photo so let's go ahead and click OK for this and I'm just gonna leave uh, line source images unchecked and remove ghosting unchecked I'm gonna reduce the noise and we're gonna reduce chromatic aberration so let's go ahead and hit OK after that and now Photomax is gonna merge our photos together and we'll uh, begin tone mapping once it's done okay so here we are in our tone mapping window in Photomax and we have the default preset selected um, I'm gonna start with the uh, painterly 2 and then I'm just gonna play with the settings from here uh, for this particular photo I'm just gonna pull the strength down to right about 60 and then I'm gonna bring up the color saturation and I'm gonna reduce the luminosity a little bit I'm not going to spend too much time. Um, in this particular photo, I'm going to hit medium for the lighting adjustment. And then maybe from here, I will want to darken the image some. Maybe bring down the white point a little bit. So it's starting to look good. Play with the gamma some. And next, we will play with micro smoothing. So I'm just going to bring this micro smoothing up here. And that is about it. Let me bring the shadow smoothness. Play with it a little bit. And I like it right about there. So that looks good. I'm not going to spend too much time here in Photomatix. We're just going to go ahead and hit the process button. And we'll take the image into Photoshop. And I'll show you what I do in Photoshop to uh, process the uh, or post process the photo using Topaz plugins okay so here we are in Photoshop and before we do anything I'm going to go ahead and strip a moon in from a previous shot that I took because I plan on putting the moon into this photo so we're gonna go ahead and open that moon shot okay so here is our moon photo I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in here and we're just gonna cut around this and strip it copy and paste it into the uh, the HDR image so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use Topaz remask to go ahead and create a mask around the moon so we can copy and paste it into the photo so let's go ahead and use Topaz Remask and here is our Topaz Remask window everything is green so what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna use the compute brush and we're gonna create a uh, outline around the moon so we're gonna do that by just clicking around the moon here I'm just gonna go and hold shift while I click so I can just kinda create a uh, compute outline around the moon and this will tell and what this will do is this will uh, tell Topaz Remask to uh, compute the edges around the moon to create our mask. So I'm going to do that. So once I create the outline here, I'm going to use the uh, the paint bucket tool. Click on that. I'm just going to click outside of the uh, the moon, and this will be the area that we don't want. Um, next, I'm going to hit the compute button, and this will create our mask. Here is our mask, and if we hit the keep this is what it's going to keep it's going to keep the moon here and the gray area is what it's going to delete so what we're going to need to do is kind of fine-tune it a little bit and kind of uh, use the uh, the red paintbrush tool to kind of 
paint around the edges here to remove the dark edges around the moon and we will be done just go ahead and do this here real fast alright so that's looking good go ahead and undo that another easy way to do this would be just to use the uh, the marquee tool, the circle marquee tool and I normally do that but sometimes the moon looks too artificial this way the moon kind of looks more realistic so and that looks good so I'm gonna hit OK once we hit OK this is what we'll get if I click the eyeball tool on the background you can see that uh, it's cut out the uh, the moon so what I do is I do the uh, control all select all copy it and then we will go into the HDR image and we will paste it into the photo next what we're gonna do is we're going to hit control T command T on the Mac and this will give us a uh, uh, a transform so let's do that again so um, control T command T on a Mac and it'll allow us to move and then scale our image how we like so I'm just gonna move and scale it right around here now I'm not gonna make it too small I'm just gonna make it right about that size and that that looks good it's not too obvious that it's been uh, stripped in but then then again it looks it looks nice because now you can kinda see the moon so the moon here is a little dark it doesn't match the uh, color of the uh, the HDR image so what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust that and we do that by going into the layers and new layer adjustment I'm gonna use the hue and uh, saturation here to adjust the uh, color just a little bit on the moon I'll click on the use previous layer and this will just affect the moon layer and then we're just gonna play around with the colors until the color looks similar to the or looks like it belongs in the image so we're gonna do that and right about there looks looks pretty good so I'm gonna just go ahead and leave it at that next I'm going to click back on the moon layer here and I'm going to create a, a glow around the moon to give the moon a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a natural look so I do this by going into the layer here and in the uh, layer style in the outer glow so we'll use that uh, that effect there and let me move this so you can see the glow there's there'll be a little glow right here around the uh, moon and what we'll do is we'll just play around with the uh, opacity and the spread you can start seeing the uh, the glow there and then the size of the moon or the size of the glow okay so now we're gonna bring the opacity down a little bit and play around with the the size and the spread next I'll play with the color I'm going to want it just a little warmer so I'm gonna pull it right around the uh, the warmer tones here and that looks good so I'm gonna hit OK so this is the uh, this is the glow and this is without the glow so this is without the glow and this is with the glow so it kinda gives it more of a nice look to the the moon there alright so now that that's done I'm going to click the top layer here and then what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, use control shift alt E and then create a composite layer and now I can go ahead and sharpen the whole image but before I sharpen I'm just gonna run a quick Topaz denoise on the photo so I'm going here and go into Topaz denoise and when I get the uh, Topaz denoise window popped up I'm just gonna hit the uh, JPEG strong and then hit the OK button and now that that's done I'm gonna go ahead and go into filters and sharpen and use the unsharp mask and we do that to kind of unsharpen the image. I'm going to bring it down a little. Let me go over here, and you can see the how it unsharpens it. So this is before, and then this is the uh, this is the after. So let's go ahead and just play with the settings here. I'm going to tone it down a little bit on the radius, and then play around with the uh, the mount. And that looks that looks good. So this is the uh, so this is before. It's a little blurry and then this is after it's a little a little sharper so I'm gonna use that and hit OK and now that I have that what I'm gonna do is uh, use the, uh, the the little clone stamp tool here or the uh, the heat spot healing tool and there's little specks in the uh, 
the lake here that I kind of want to get rid of. So let's go ahead and zoom in, and we'll just use that. I hit J for that, so I can uh, and just kind of rub around the uh, the area here. And I believe these were lily pads, but uh, you can barely tell what they are since uh, the water was moving kind of blurry. So I'm just going to go ahead and just get rid of them since it kind of looks um, it doesn't look so good. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And then there are some small noise where I'm just going to click around and get rid of that, get rid of these spots here. And this doesn't really help out, so I'm just going to remove remove that and remove this edge here and maybe this one streak here and right around there so that looks good I'm just gonna go ahead and take time right now to look around the sky here and there's some spots here that I want to get rid of so let's go ahead and get rid of that and that looks good so I'm gonna zoom back out next I am going to go ahead and run Topaz uh, adjust so we're gonna go ahead here and go into Topaz adjust Alright, so once I have Topaz Adjust window up, what I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and use the uh, classic collection. I'm going to start with the preset either cold or warm, and I think I'm going to start with cold, brilliant cold. And then we're going to play around with the settings here. Uh, usually with my uh, global adjustments here on Adaptive, I like to pull that down slightly. And then pull the contrast down, and this just gives me more color. And so that looks good. Next, I'm going to go ahead and go into the uh, maybe into color and see if I can bring out a little bit of the saturation. And that looks good. And I'm going to try to play with the detail now. See if I can get the uh, the image to pop a little more. So that looks good. So this is before, and then this is after. Topaz adjust so I like it right there I'm just gonna go ahead and hit OK with that alright so here is the uh, bef so this is before and then this is after Topaz adjust um, this might be a little too intense so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring it down and play around with it a little bit with the opacity so I'm gonna just play around with it and right about there looks good 55% so I'm gonna click on the layer again hit control shift alt E create a new layer on top of that and with that layer, what I'm going to do is I am going to blur the, the lake here. So it kind of gives it a little bit of a smooth transition. So we're going to use a simple uh, um, a simple blur here, a Gaussian blur. Use, sometimes I use the, uh, the Topaz lens effect. But for this particular photo, Gaussian blur is good. So we'll leave it at 10 here, radius 10. Hit OK. And now I am going to create a mask and invert that mask control I command I on a Mac and makes a black mask and so that you can see the layer below below the, the layer above it next I'm going to go ahead and select the white paintbrush tool make sure it's on white and then I'm going to start painting here right on top of here at a hundred percent let's change that to a hundred percent and then what this will do is this will give the lake a glossy look so this will help out the uh, to make the look to make the lake very smooth and, and make it look like it's a mirror very smooth nice and glossy so I'll do that so that looks good um, I noticed when we pulled back the opacity earlier that it brought the lily pads back in which was which was my mistake I, something I I do often and causes a lot of problems later so what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna hit the uh, control shift alt E again and then go back to the J, click J to go back to the uh, the little s cl healing tool, spot healing tool. I'm gonna just dab right in here, and that looks good. So let's take a look at the image real fast. The before before we did anything here. So this is the before, and then this is after everything. So it looks really nice, um, more vibrant, a little more pop. All right, so now we're almost done with the photo. The only thing. I have two more things that I want to do here so I'm going to hit the control shift alt e real fast and create a uh, composite layer and I'm going to go into screen and make this layer screen and I'm going to, I'm going to lighten the moon here uh, in this particular photo the moon is a little dark so I'm going to lighten it using screen next I'm going to use the uh, gradient tool here make sure it's on the uh, the radial tool right here this is the radial and then we will add a mask 
and then we'll go into the uh, click here and this will give us the uh, gradient preset so I'm gonna click this one right here hit OK and then we're gonna run the uh, the gradient tool from here to here and that is actually the opposite of what I want so let's go back here and actually we're gonna reverse this from down here you can either hit X or you can hit this little switch button here and then this will switch our gradient around and what we want to do is go back to the uh, photo here to kind of start from here and then pull it out so what this does is this creates a lighter moon as you can see here so that now it's lighter from that screen and then we'll just pull down the passy to pull down the uh, intensity a little bit we don't want it dark like that but we want it a little brighter so I'm going to pull it make it a little brighter and that looks good at about 69 percent and then the the last thing I'm going to do is is I'm going to create another composite layer and I'm going to do that little Orton effect kind of like my little favorite thing to do here for photos so I'm going to do this real fast Topaz do the uh, lens effect on the uh, Topaz lens effect here use that to blur the image okay so once we have the uh, lens effect open I am going to go into the uh, bokeh SLR lens and use the Canon 135 f2 and I'm going to hit OK and then that will blur our photo and I'm going to change the mode here to soft light and then now it looks very uh, dreamy very vibrant so I'm going to go into the opacity of the uh, that mode and just play around with it and see where I kind of like the image so I kind of like it right around the 70% mark so I'm going to go ahead and go into about 70% um, that looks good but because we did that it darkened the whole photo so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a control shift alt E and I'm going to go into image adjustment and shadow highlights and then I am going to play around with the uh, the the fill color here in the shadows and just kind of bring it out a little bit and hit OK with that so this is before and then this is after this kind of brings out the shadows a little bit and then I'm just going to mask around this area create a mask here I'm going to invert that mask and then I'm going to go into the uh, paintbrush tool and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just use the white not necessarily a hundred percent let's go down let's go down to fifty percent and just paint around Paint around the building to kind of bring back some detail in the building. So that looks good. So this is before and this is after. So that's pretty much it for Photoshop. Now I'm going to take it into Lightroom. Um, in Lightroom, we're going to go ahead and I'll show you how I use Lightroom to adjust the detail and the sharpness, the contrast, and the colors to enhance the image even further. So here we are in Lightroom and I am about to start processing the photo. Um, I'm going to start with the uh, basics tab and uh, we're going to start playing with the uh, the temperature or the white balance and just play around with it to see whether cooler or warmer is better and then down the next one here the tint let's see alright so I'm liking liking it right about there and now we'll play with the exposure next we will go into recovery light and then fill light and then we'll add a little black into the scene just to add a little contrast and then maybe bring the brightness up just a tad and then the contrast a little and now we'll play with the clarity. I'm going to want to bring the clarity up some just to kind of give some more depth to the photo, some more uh, um, clarity here in the, uh, the skyline. And then we will play with the vibrance to deepen up all the, the blues up here so that'll be it I won't touch saturation and then let's go ahead and close basics and then we'll play with the tonal curve um, let's play around with the uh, the highlights we kinda want the moon somewhat brighter so we'll play with that and then we'll bring up the lights a little bit see if we want the darks bring up the dark some and now play with the shadows 
and that looks good right about there so let's close the tonal curve and then we will we'll play with the colors I think I am going to play with the uh, luminescence in the blue maybe bring it down a little to kinda make it rich rich blue color there maybe even bring the saturation in the blue up some and that looks looks very good I'm gonna play with the green because we got a lot of greens going on let's see what happens if we play with the green so I like it right about there since I'm playing with the green I'm gonna play with the yellow also so let's play with that I like I like it right about there let's go to luminosity we'll play with the yellows and the greens there so it looks good there and yeah, let's bring the greens up so that's good there. Let's we won't we won't do anything with split toning. Let's go ahead and give it some detail where the the sharpening here. So I'm gonna click on this and then bring the sharpening up. So this will sharpen the photo some. So let me bring back. So this sharpens our photo just a little. Next, I'm not gonna worry about lens correction, but we will we'll add a little bit of a vignette into the photo to kind of darken the outer edges of the photo so that looks good so that's pretty much it for Lightroom we're pretty much done here so let's see the uh, before here so this was before this was in Photoshop and this is after Lightroom alright so that's it so let's do a quick recap about what we just did okay so here is the exposure that we started with so here is the first exposure the uh, evenly exposed image here is the uh, two stops under here is the two stops over and then our next two exposures which is four stops under and the other exposure for the fifth exposure being four stops over so we took all those four exposures we took them and merged it into photomatics to create this HDR image and then we took it into Photoshop we took it into Photoshop we added the moon we used a bunch of Topaz plugins to create this HDR photo and then we took this photo and we took it into Lightroom to adjust the colors, the contrast, the tones, the details to create our final image. Okay, so that wraps it up for this video tutorial. If you want to learn more about my work or the software that I use, like Photomatics and Topaz, you can visit my website at CaptainKemo.com. You can also find download links and buy now links on my website, including coupon codes and stuff like that to save on the software. Um, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And until next time, this is Captain Kimo signing out.